so very good evening to all of you who have uh, come here uh, on this uh, wonderful sunday evening so very happy to meet you all and i'm really excited to take you through uh, another interesting tool that we have today as part of uh, coffee with vaidhi uh, for those who are joining the platform for the first time, a few lines about myself. I am Vaidhi Shuran Vedigri, the founder and principal learning consultant of Vylearn. Uh, we are into uh, learning design development and uh, learning technology. And uh, Coffee with Vaidhi is basically an initiative where um, I have taken this on myself to uh, help our teaching and uh, trainers and our student community to get themselves up to speed with uh, some of the latest and the greatest in um, technology and tools so that we can grow on par with our counterparts across the globe and as you all know these sessions are all free and these sessions are also recorded so uh, if you can go through these recordings after the session and uh, if you have any questions you can definitely post them on our whatsapp group and i'll be happy to answer and if you find these sessions interesting and if you feel that these sessions will be useful for uh, people that you know you can uh, forward these invites to them and uh, welcome them to these sessions as well so on that brief note we will get started with today's session so today we will be talking about a very interesting tool called obs studio so <clears throat> i think most of you will be familiar with uh, obs but anyway for those for those who are new to OBS, I will give a very quick introduction and I will show you from where you can get this tool. So OBS is a tool which can be used for recording and streaming audio and video from your machine. Right, That's a very high level introduction of what OBS can do. OBS can do a lot more. But this is at, at the core, this is what OBS is designed for. It is a very powerful tool. It is a very popular tool. And the best part is this tool is completely free. There are no charges of any sort. You can, you're free to download it, whether you're using Windows or Macintosh. You can download it and uh, get it installed uh, in your machine and uh, really get started. So what I'm going to do is I will start by showing you from where you can get OBS Studio. We will look at uh, how you can download OBS Studio. And once that is done, I will open the OBS Studio app, give you the lay of the land and give you some of the basic functions and some of the basic settings that you can do with OBS and how you can record a little bit of video and audio to your machine. We will try to do storyboarding today if time permits. If not, we will talk about storyboarding and uh, streaming in detail to on another uh, on the subsequent session. <coughs> so as far as OBS is concerned, um, you can use OBS to stream on a multitude of platforms because you would have seen people using OBS typically to stream on YouTube or in Twitch, but you can also stream onto a variety of platforms including Facebook. In fact, you can run a full-fledged Zoom presentation on OBS, right? The beauty with OBS is you can do all your video work, all your screen sharing and all of that without even hitting the screen share option on Zoom. You can use it on Microsoft Teams as well. So we're going to be talking about all of this across these two sessions. So like I had indicated in my uh, initial flyer, this is the first session because I don't want to burden you with too much content today. So we will start with the basics. And uh, in the subsequent session, which will happen uh, in the next month, I will go into the details of how exactly you need to set up OBS to get all these things done. Okay, so without further ado, let me start sharing my screen and let's jump into OBS. So for today's purpose, I am going to be using the regular uh, screen share feature that is there in zoom because i want to make sure that i demonstrate obs for you in its full glory so let's quickly do that so to go to obs you'll have to go to obsproject.com this is the site so the full form of obs is open broadcaster software so 
it's a very straightforward site so you have windows mac os or linux or whichever is your operating system you can just click that if you're using windows just click windows um, your file will get downloaded installer so after that i'm just stopping the install because i'm on a mac right now <clears throat> but after you download it is like installing any of your regular software you can install obs and once you install obs your application will open let me quickly open obs for you right so when you open obs this is how obs will look like so you have uh, two windows like this you have a bunch of windows at the bottom and you have a menu structure on the top so i'll give you a quick overview of what all these things are and how you need to get started in setting up obs for your programs right so if you look at uh, i will not go into the top menu first because in our day-to-day -day work we won't be using so much of this this is the area where we will be focusing on um, to the max so we'll get started so if you look at it uh, we'll start from the right corner which says controls over here so here you have a list of options so here you can see that the studio mode is being selected by default so if you turn it off it will be one single screen so I will tell you what studio mode is. So studio mode is where you have two windows open where your left window on the top it says preview. So that is like your staging area. So if you are going to stream something you can post it in the preview mode over here. I'll show you how to do that. And you can watch what is happening over here before you move it to the right screen which is the program. So whatever appears on the right window is what is going to be streamed live or that is going to be recorded in your machine right so this is how your studio mode is set so ideally when you are using obs it is good to have studio mode on because if you turn off studio mode whatever you have over here is the program mode so it just starts streaming and whatever um, it appears over here is going to be streamed so you don't have the option of sort of checking or previewing what you want to put on screen before it gets on screen so that's the reason why studio mode has been turned on by default for you so it's a good thing to keep that on okay the next we will go into settings because settings is the first thing that you need to adjust so that your devices are configured correctly because when it comes to streaming yes you will definitely be streaming uh, things that appear uh, on your desktop like if you have a slide deck or if you have a video or anything like that but you will also be streaming your own self your camera and your microphone so we need to set that up first before we get started with anything else so we'll see how to do that so i'm going into settings so your settings window opens up you can see a lot of uh, tabs on the left hand side so here uh, these are your general settings so general settings you can leave it as is you don't have to uh, worry so much about this this whatever is there in default will work absolutely fine and then we will go into um okay we'll go into stream stream is essentially where you will have to configure your stream source so these are the various places where you can stream twitch youtube facebook rest stream twitter and there are other custom streams that you can generate for which you'll have to create what is called a stream key so that we will talk about a little later in uh, this particular uh, program because that's a little more technical and complicated we will not touch that for the moment so you can see that my podcast is already connected uh, to this so when we get into the streaming aspect of things i'll show you uh, how exactly this connection is done so down we go into output so this is where we need to tweak our settings so we'll have to check for these things streaming settings recording settings audio settings and replay buffer so streaming settings is where you will have to configure the way in which you are going to stream your content so uh, you can decide the number of audio tracks you want but typically we will keep it at one because we typically have only one mic when we um, stream audio so we keep it at one and uh, when it comes to encoder you can keep it at x264 x264 is the uh, broadcast standard that is 
uh, followed by all major sites including your YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Everyone follows X264 as a global standard so you can stick to that. And uh, constant bit, the CBR is constant bit rate. So again, you don't have to worry about any of this. Whatever you have over here is good. The place where you need to check is recording. So the good thing about OBS is when you are streaming a particular uh, program, you also have the ability to record the same program in parallel in your machine. So when you are streaming something, you can make a copy of your stream to your machine so that if you want to upload a copy of that or you want to make some edits to it and upload a cleaner copy of that, you can do. Or if you are not looking to really live stream anything, you're not I mean something that you don't want to do and you probably would like to record yourself making a presentation, make some edits and then create a video and do a sort of a premiering on YouTube or premiering on Facebook. You can do all of that with OBS. So in order to do that in OBS to make sure that your files are getting recorded properly, you'll have to configure this. Again, it's a very, very simple and straightforward menu. So you can uh, select the recording type standard is absolutely fine. You can select the location where you want to record your files. So wherever is your location, you can uh, record uh, your thing. So once that is done, um, you can generate file. So uh, OBS will automatically generate a file name for you. I think that should be fine. You don't have to worry too much about that. And recording format, you have multiple options over here, but it is good to stick with MP4 because MP4 again is the standard format that is used across all platforms. So if you want to make any edits or uh, probably want to upload or share with someone, MP4 is the way to go. So that's, uh, you can do something like that. Um, audio again, encoding happens in X264. So you don't have to worry about all of this. All of this is fine. The only thing that you need to check is the location of where your stream is going to be recorded. Because if you are not sure of where uh, the stream is getting recorded, uh, after the recording is done, you will have a hard time literally searching your computer to find out where this is going to happen. And the other question that I typically get is, can this recording be done to an external drive? Because some people might not have sufficient space in their uh, hard drives to record a full-fledged session. For example, uh, uh, I mean, last month I can we conducted a program where uh, there was a 12-hour session, 12-hour Zoom session that was happening, and that I conducted that entire session through OBS. And uh, while that session was happening, we also wanted to have a copy of that recording on my machine. So what I did was I used OBS to record the entire session. So a 12 hour recording is going to be a massive file. So what I did was I connected an external hard drive and recorded the entire session to that external hard drive. So that is something that is definitely possible. So if you are having a machine which has space constraints and would like to use an external drive to record your sessions, you can absolutely do that uh, using OBS. And audio configuration. So you can see that the bitrate is set to 192. 192 is excellent quality. If you want to have some sort of a control on the file size, you can probably reduce it to 128. But please don't go below 128 because 128 is what we typically what we call in uh, audio parlance as CD quality. Don't go below 128; it will sound very bad. So anything about anything at 128 or above is good. 192 is very very good. Okay. So again, audio settings. Audio settings, you will have to configure your input over here. So, <coughs> so typically, if you are using a desktop or a laptop, uh, this will be enabled, this will be kept at as default. So, what if it is set at default, you should be fine. In my situation over here, my, uh, uh, my I'm using a desktop computer right now and it doesn't have an inbuilt mic in it. So, I have set it to disabled and I have an external uh, sound card over here. I have a, a full board mixer over here, which is called Soundcraft Signature uh, 12 MTK. So that is what I have connected. I have uh, a number of external audio devices that I have connected. But for this particular demonstration, I'm using this particular one. Okay. 
and uh, you don't have to worry again about any of this whatever is set in default will absolutely work for you see one of the things that you need to remember when it comes to using OBS is when you go into all these menus you will see a lot of uh, custom options that are available but for your purpose if you are using a simple uh, a desktop uh, with a mic and a camera and you just have some stuff on your screen that you want to share and you want to talk to it you don't have to worry about any of these features because for a very simple setup whatever is set by default in OBS will work for you this particular tweaking will be required only when you are using a very complicated setup where you have uh, like multiple cameras multiple microphones and a lot of other things that are connected to your computer and basically if you are trying to make your life complicated you'll have to worry about all of this but if you are a very simple uh, content producer you don't have to worry about most of these settings and of course when it comes to video you can uh, select 1920 by 1080 which is uh, full high definition uh, this is uh, the 38 for this is actually 2k and I mean it's about 2k 4k and all that but when it comes to streaming we typically stream only at high definition because YouTube supports only up to high definition at the moment so even if you have a 4k camera or a 2k camera or a 6k camera anyway YouTube is or Facebook is going to stream only at uh, full HD which is uh, 1080p so whatever is set over here as 1080p this should be more than in this should be absolutely sufficient if your webcam doesn't support high definition by default it will go to 720p suppose if you are having an inbuilt uh, webcam in your laptop that you're going to use or if you have a webcam which is uh, priced at a slightly lower range uh, it will default to 720p which is uh, slightly lower than high definition which is also fine but if you have a high definition camera it is good to keep this at 1080p so that your video quality will be really really good okay um, again FPS values is frames per second 30 frames per second is standard I think that should be fine if you go with 59.94 or 60 frames per second your file size will balloon like crazy number one and number two if your camera is not strong enough or your internet connection is not strong enough your there will be frame losses over there so your video will appear a little choppy if you are using any if you are using a normal desktop camera or a standard webcam uh, anything like a 24 uh, frame per second or up to 30 frames per second you should be good I mean in fact right now I am talking through a camcorder which I am using as a webcam and this is a very very powerful device and even for that I use only 30 frames per second because I want to make sure that the quality that I am getting in the form of output is the best it doesn't compromise on anything right so next is hotkeys again this is a little complicated you don't have to worry about it right now this is basically for you to create shortcuts so let's say that you want to start and stop streaming you can probably assign one key to it and it lacked as a hotkey so basically this is for uh, setting shortcuts so again this is not something that we this is something that again we need when we are doing a very very complicated production but for simple productions like ours I think we can do with whatever we have because one of the things that I will also be demonstrating for you today is to create a structure a production structure and show you how uh, <coughs> you can transition between different sources so again that's something that I'll be demonstrating and again when it comes to advanced features this is something that you don't again have to worry about these are all your color formats and color spacings and also these are all set to standard we don't have to worry about it this is only for people who are into uh, like professional broadcasting where they'll have to worry about which broadcast standard and which broadcast frequency and all those things so we don't have to worry about any of this so this is how your settings menu is configured okay so <coughs> excuse me so we have the settings in place now we will look at certain other components that are over here so when it comes to start recording this button is absolutely straightforward when you click start recording okay it's showing a warning that I have not got any uh, inputs over here so let me quickly add something over here 
or okay let will probably do that a little later we'll first finish this menu and come to that start virtual camera so start virtual camera is actually that tool which is going to help obs to interact with uh, applications like zoom or uh, ms teams and use this particular platform to stream your content yourself and your content without hitting the screen share button in those respective tools so again we will look into a demonstration of how to use the virtual camera in obs and of course start streaming is once your stream is configured you can hit start streaming and your streaming will happen and uh, manage broadcast is that option where you will be able to create a particular broadcast you can give a title you can give a description uh, you can give the privacy settings you can categorize it just like how you would set up a broadcast in youtube uh, you can do uh, the same thing over here um, it can be anything let's say education you can add a thumbnail to it so all of this can be done so you and you can create a custom broadcast and if your broadcast is also ready you can start streaming so this is how the right hand side menu is configured okay <clears throat> so now we will start adding some elements into obs and see how we can create a sort of a structure when it comes to creating content on obs okay so i think there's some message on chat okay so when it comes to streamyard uh i have used streamyard very very limitingly i have not used it extensively but in my experience i find obs to be a bit more intuitive and it has a lot more features uh packed and more than that it has constant updates and community support which i find is really really good compared to streamyard and streamyard i think it has some it has restrictions in terms of uh streaming to particular platforms whereas with obs you can stream across any modality that you want and it also has a recording feature which records to your hard drive so that's those are some of the key uh differences that are there so now let's go into okay so how many channels can be connected together sky is the limit sir you can connect any number of channels you want there are no restrictions when it comes to obs in terms of how many channels you can connect you can connect multiple channels over here not a problem yes you can stream on linkedin definitely so uh there's a great question sir so linkedin is definitely possible you can literally stream to any application you want so that is where your virtual camera is going to come into play see because if you look at the other streaming software they typically have a list of standard sites even here if you go into settings and go to stream you will have a list of services that are available over here these are standard services but if you want to stream to other services beyond this you can use this virtual camera setting that is available over here so i will be demonstrating all of that uh, in the uh, subsequent part of this session so first let's go ahead and uh, create a scene <coughs> and select sources to make sure that we have something that we can stream okay so by default obs creates scene one for us you can add multiple uh, scenes how many ever scenes you want you can keep adding to it and in each scene you will add assets so i will show you how to do that so it is more like a menu and a sub menu kind of a setting so here i have selected scene one and in scene one we don't have any sources over here so we will have to add a source for scene one so we'll have to click this plus button over here it will give you a variety of options so it will ask you okay so what do you want to start with so let's say that i want to first uh, share my camera okay so i'm selecting video capture device so you can just give it a name so I hit okay then it will ask you which device you want to connect so right now i have two cameras uh, selected so this is one of the cameras that i think that's the one you're seeing i have another camera which is actually over here so that i my computer currently has two cameras connected to it so one is a camcorder which is let me move this over here so that you can see it better so this is the webcam through which i was talking through uh, all this while uh, during the session 
and uh, this is another camera that I have uh, set up in parallel over here to my desk right so if you are having multiple cameras you can select whichever camera option you want so typically I mean right now I have set it up uh, in a way that both cameras are facing me but if you are an educator or if you are a uh, trainer and let's say you have a whiteboard or you probably have something that some object that you want to demonstrate you can focus this particular camera on that object so that once you are done talking you can shift cameras and uh, use that camera to continue your session so what I will do is I will configure both cameras as part of this particular demonstration and we will see how all of this is being set up so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to set up my primary camera the one that you see over here so right now it is set at uh, 720p but this is a full high definition camera so I'm going to 1080p so I'm clicking OK so the first scene it says video capture device and you can see that I am appearing on the left side of the screen which is the preview so if I want to go into live all I'll have to do is just move the slider and I am on the live screen okay or if you don't want this you can turn you can just click fade to black this will become black and I come back to the preview mode so like this you can add multiple sources so I will show you how to do that so I am going to add another scene so I'm going to what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to quickly recreate a project that I did uh, in August so in August as you all know or for people who are new to this uh, particular program Vylan completed its first anniversary and for that uh, anniversary we did a live stream on YouTube to uh, celebrate the anniversary and uh, okay so they have a question here let me address that before we go in also shows iPad also with speech are they using two cameras okay so uh, that question wasn't isn't very clear so some programs show iPad also with speech uh, sir could you come off mute and uh, probably clarify that question a bit for me no, so uh, what I have seen that like uh, suppose some of the program uh, what we have seen that he's trying to show uh, the graph or something on iPad, like he's drawing something on iPad. So is it uh, is it like sharing the screen or uh, yes. they are using the camera? I I was always wondering that what is happening there actually. It's a it's a screen share, sir. It's a screen share, but it shows as uh, uh, okay. It shows the iPad only. Like suppose I attended one of the program of uh, Jim Ron or some uh, some guy from US. Mm -hmm. and he was uh, drawing everything there on iPad actually yes so that is actually a screen share I mean if were you able to see his finger manipulating the iPad or just the iPad I'm able to see that you're able to see his finger touching the iPad yes I mean he's using some pan or something actually so okay so then that that's a multi-camera setup multi-camera setup that's a multi-camera okay. and, and many many programs I have seen like uh, the Ankur Variko speech and all that Mm -hmm. uh, what they are using when they are giving, uh, they are creating a program. Like mm -hmm. uh, you know that there are some video program standard. So sometimes he is facing to us. Sometimes uh, the other camera is facing actually. So they use uh, the two cameras that time. Yes, they use multiple cameras. They so use... can you put a setting also that after uh, let's say five minute, every five minute you can actually change the camera or something? You that that's what I'm going to show you. Okay, you can actually good, good. set up multiple cameras. I, let me set up the second camera and I'll show you how it is done. Sir. Okay, but it's automatically you can try to switch. No, no, no. Right. You will have to manually do it with OBS because manually OBS do it. is okay. a production. It's a production studio. So okay. let me quickly add the second camera also. Uh, this is a fantastic tool, actually. I never knew this actually. Okay. Really, very nice. So device two, I'm adding my second camera. Okay, this again is a full high definition camera so what I'm doing is see right now let's say that okay so the right side screen the program is currently happening so what if I want to do so I can bring the second camera to my staging view and I have control of when I want to move so when I'm talking to this and I want to change the angle all I have to do is just turn over here and this angle changes in life and this goes into this mode and when I want to turn around back to my camera all I have to do is come over here and this comes in so you can see the changes that happen on the right side 
right so this is the live uh, broadcast which is happening on the right side so of it the is uh, it is you automatically it's happening or you are doing something i am i am manipulating the screen you can if you look at the screen share so i man see you can see the slider that i am moving okay 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 right so this is the slider that i am moving so okay. i have two scenes right now set up where both cameras are focused on me or if you want to make it look a little bit more dramatic and show parts where your side profile is seen when you are talking so you can just change over here and you continue talking into your camera but the people who are watching you will watch your side profile it will look a little bit more dramatic mm -hmm. so this for a few seconds and then come back to this view or let's okay. say that you are conducting a tutorial let's say that you want to teach people how to use this remote so what i do is i talk a little bit about the remote then i go over here go to the live stream i teach all these functions that are there in the remote and once i have done teaching this uh, how to use this remote i slide this back and i come to the main view like this this is a good facility yes yes so you have complete control in terms of uh, how you are able to manipulate the different cameras and how you are able to focus between uh, different parts of your presentation so this is how you manipulate between different video streams right so now that we now that we have seen two different uh, types of videos being added let's go ahead and add some content so to give you some perspective like i said i'm going to be recreating uh, one of the projects that i did um, like in august wylan completed uh, its first year of existence and i did a live stream on youtube to celebrate that and uh, sort of go through some of uh, my achievements and some of the learnings that i had over the past year so what i did was i created a poster for that event and uh, we also did a little bit of a reminiscence of uh, the first video that i ever created uh, when i launched wylearn uh, in august 2020 uh, 2021 so i created a video on the launch day of wylearn so i played that video and then i also introduced coffee with vaidhi where i had a small promo of coffee with vaidhi that was also created so all of this i had to do a screen share on live so if it were zoom i will have to say uh, i mean once i finish talking i'll have to say please hold on i'll have to go to screen share then i'll have to select video and all of that but here we can do it completely seamlessly with ubs so let me go ahead and start adding those assets into the various scenes i am going to create a new scene over here scene 3 but here i am going to rename the screen as poster you can name anything any way you want so here i'm going to go in and select an image okay i'm going to go to browse desktop uh let's see podcast while on year one so this is the image i open this image okay and i can also resize this image if i want to reposition this any way i want all of this can be done so this is the poster that i wanted to share and i also have some more items that i want to do so this is the launch video that i wanted to share as part of my presentation so go to launch video go here add uh, a media source okay search for the file while on launch hit open press it okay so that video is added i'm going to add one more video which is about coffee with vaidhi so coffee with vaidhi was introduced only 7 uh, months back during the course of wylearn's existence so i made a small promo when i was on travel so i'm going to add that particular uh, asset as well going to media source okay search coffee with vaidhi open okay so here in the preview mode you can look at all of these things so you can see what this particular video is uh let me let me quickly play that yeah one second so when i go to so let's say that i show this poster okay so when the video is about to start i first show this poster over there so people who are joining the live stream first sees this first see this video and then i move to my camera like so i welcome the audience 
and then I talk about okay so a year back I launched Vylearn and it was a very memorable moment I was traveling and I was in Bangalore and I launched Vylearn from my hotel room in Bangalore and then I just slide and bring that video in so right now you won't be able to hear the audio but if you are on the live stream the audio will be streamed directly to them so this particular video then plays out for them like this and once this particular video introduction is done you can again swipe back to screen one and just say so i hope you enjoyed that video uh, so from there we have traveled uh, a lot of uh, places and we've met a lot of interesting people so i talk about all of that and then say uh, six months into Vylearn, I introduced Coffee with YD and I have a short uh, video that introduces Coffee with YD to you. So let's listen to it. I just say that and transition, Coffee with YD video comes automatically. So I just have to keep quiet. This video will play. <coughs> Excuse me. So once this, this is actually a seven minute video, it plays. So once this seven minute video is done, all I'll have to do is just slide, come back to this main camera and continue my talk. So whatever is happening on the right side of the screen over here is being streamed directly on YouTube. So this is what people will be seeing. Whatever happens over here is what people will be seeing on YouTube or whichever platform that you choose to stream your content, right? So this is how we typically create a structure to create a program for your audience on YouTube. So instead of uh, st starting your screen share, stopping your screen share and again starting your screen share, looking for the application, looking for the correct file to stream and making your audience sort of wait. Okay, so they're going to share something. So instead of making them wait, if you have a sequence that is planned like this you just have to just select whatever you want to do next just select okay so i want to change the camera just hit this change immediately things get changed that's it or you want to do a sort of a make it a little bit more interesting and you want to do a slow transition you can do a slow transition like this just hold it very very move it very very slowly you can control the speed or you just make a quick transition like this so whatever you want to do however you want to do you can play with obs and when you create a structure like this from your audience standpoint it gives them a very very seamless experience so it's not like you take a pause every time to share your screen uh, because when you do that you sort of lose the train of thought that you have and your audience also might get a bit disengaged when they are waiting for you to share your screen Whereas this experience will be completely seamless for them. So when it comes to adding different types of uh, applications, you can do a lot of things over here. You can input, uh, you can select audio inputs, which will stream only the audio part. If you have a particular window in your browser open and you want to talk about that, you can select that in the sequence. For example, in today's video, where I talked about the OBS browser and the OBS download, I could actually have that browser window saved over here as part of my sequence. So all I'll have to do is just go over here and select this because my audience is going to see only this part. All of this over here is not visible to them. This is visible only to you. Only this part is visible to your audience. So you can play all you want over here, right? So again, you can share images like how I just showed you. If you have a slideshow of images, you can show that over here media source again i just showed you how to share a video and if you have a scene that's already been created elsewhere you can bring it over here uh, siphon client is something that we use for game games we don't uh, typically need it over here or if you want to add any text that sort of appears on screen like a scroll or anything like that you can make all of that happen video capture device we just saw how to do that and window if you have a particular window in your machine open and you want to share that if it, it's like if you're suppose you're conducting a technical training of sorts like a, i usually conduct trainings in word and powerpoint so if you want to do something like that and share only that you can add that to your part of part of your sequence so which means that when you go about screen sharing there are two benefits to this one the first benefit is you have a sequence and it sort of flows without any breaks 
and number two if you are streaming through OBS you will be rest assured that you will not be sharing any part of your screen that you don't intend to share right so because you might have something on your desktop or something uh, on the list of files that you have that you might not want to reveal to your audience right so you when you use OBS and when you structure it in this manner you will have absolute control on what exactly is going to be shared and what exactly is going to be the sequence of things that are going to be shared and once you have that control not only will you have a peace of mind that you know what exactly is going to appear on the screen your audience will also be rest assured that okay so there is a sequence there is a nice flow that is happening and see your presentation or your sessions will start looking that much different to your audience because they are used to people asking them to wait when the presenter is crumbling about trying to share their screen when you are using OBS and when you transition to OBS and start presenting like this your presentations will start standing apart your presentations will look seamless and in fact during a couple of OBS streams I have even been asked as if as like is this a pre-recorded session I'll get a comment and at that point I'll say I'll just pause and say this is not a pre-recorded session this session is absolutely live okay so again this is a very interesting <laughs> phenomenon that you will have and another is aspect... a, sorry I have, I have a query uh, uh is it possible suppose if i'm taking the interview of somebody mm -hmm. and he both are at a different location uh can i uh, have two different access uh, he can also come on obs and i can also come on obs and we can get two different windows uh, and then both are uh, both are speaking actually yes you can okay absolutely possible i will show uh, again uh, that can be achieved through your virtual camera right I'll, I'll show you how you can achieve that virtual because camera means i have to select uh the guest camera that's what you're saying no 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 virtual camera is completely different virtual cam what virtual camera will do is whatever you see over here right as your live stream it will treat this window as a feed from a webcam okay I'll, I'll, I'll show you how it will work okay we will we'll come to that shortly I'll just show you one more feature before we go into virtual camera right just give me a second so here uh, where do we have that one second okay so here this there is another brilliant feature that is there in OBS of course this is, will work only with Facebook or with YouTube it will not work with zoom unfortunately this is a feature where you can enable the chat window so the chat window will open suppose when you are streaming live on Twitch or on YouTube or on Facebook if people are interacting on live chat that live chat will flow on top over here so you can instead of switching windows and searching for things you can just look at your screen you can look at the comments going up and you can just straight away respond you don't have to touch anything or manipulate anything on your keyboard or your mouse so that's another interesting feature that is there in OBS that you can uh, really capitalize on it's a very good feature and uh, yeah so before so that was one feature that I wanted to uh, talk to you about um, so the last feature that I would like to touch upon today is uh, virtual camera okay is there any tutorial or e tool for amateurs to this domain uh, this is actually the tutorial for amateurs because if you go to OBS site they will talk about particular applications of or the different functions of OBS so what I am trying to do over here is to take you through a sequence starting from the basic things that you can do to slowly amp it up to the complex levels so as so that's why I don't want to cover everything in today's session I'm going to only touch upon some of the basic aspects the streaming and broadcasting and all of that I'm going to touch upon at a later stage that will be in the second session so this might seem a little overwhelming but what I suggest is you can you can go through the recording just see if you are able to replicate these steps in your machine if you have any questions you can post it on our uh, group and I'll be happy to answer and uh, 
we will anyway have a continuation session so if you want to get your doubts clarified on a live session uh, on whatever that we have discussed today we can definitely do that as part of the next session also and continue on to the other sort of a little bit more complex aspects of obs okay so the last aspect that we will be talking can you can about, you show the linkedin please linkedin uh, how it is possible i am coming to that that's exactly what i'm going to show right now so what we are going to do is we are going to look at the virtual camera so virtual camera like i said is that particular tool which is going to help convert your obs feed into a camera field uh, into a camera feed this means that when you turn on your virtual camera what obs will do is whatever software that you open whether it is linkedin or zoom or uh, microsoft teams what it will do is whatever feed that you are giving it will communicate to that tool saying that this is whatever source that comes over here is the source of a webcam i'll quickly demonstrate and show you how that works so i will open zoom settings itself uh, so that uh, we can do a quick demo of that let's see zoom is easiest to do so when you go to zoom settings go to video settings in your camera options after you install obs you will have something called obs virtual camera and it will look like this okay because i have not started the virtual camera over here so once i hit virtual camera this comes up and when i select this poster and transition see what comes over here if you select your regular webcam it will look like this if you select your obs virtual camera it will look like this so whatever you are streaming over here will appear over here if it is an image it is an image if it's a video it's a video if you are streaming this particular video this particular video will start coming on your camera feed so what typically so what is you are trying to do is this particular feed becomes your webcam so while your software whether it is linkedin or whether it is zoom or whether it is teams will consider this as a webcam feed in reality it is actually your obs feed that is going into those respective softwares being treated as a webcam that's it so that is how your live camera your uh, virtual camera works so i'm going to stop this camera i'll do another demonstration just give me a second uh, i'm going to stop my screen share for a moment <coughs> excuse me sorry so i have to take um, okay yeah uh, let me go back to my video okay so i have set it on virtual camera just give me a second zoom uh, settings video back to my camera yes i am back okay so uh, i hope this particular aspect uh, is clear so when you go into linkedin and you want to stream on linkedin all you have to do is once your event is going to start when you are selecting your audio and video sources all you have to do is select your obs virtual camera as the video source and once you hit start virtual camera on obs and you hit start stream on linkedin whatever you do in obs is going to be streamed directly on linkedin live the same principle applies on zoom the same principle also applies on ms teams and any other website that supports streaming you can do it this way i hope that answered your question sir so uh, if, uh, how can i select uh, multiple uh, programs multiple uh, social media sites So if I want to do three places together, let's say Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So how can I do the selection? Okay. 
so as far as youtube is concerned you can do a live stream directly of uh, obs that is one and if you want to create multiple instances let's say that you want to stream on zoom as well as on linkedin you just have to open two instances of obs that's it you can open multiple instances of obs and you say this instance of obs stream to linkedin this instance of obs stream to whatever other site that you want but typically when we do streaming we don't go more than two or three sites if we are willing to restrict to two then you can use a single instance of obs where your standard youtube or facebook live can be done directly using uh, obs and you can use the virtual camera to stream on the other platform okay okay Got if it. you want to do four or five sites simultaneously you'll have to open multiple instances of obs the only drawback in doing that is obs requires a certain processing power if your laptop is not really a high end laptop your subsequent obs instances will start lagging okay okay so up to 2 or 3 you will be able to do it within the same no, maximum 3 I, i i think not, not more than 3 yeah 3 you will be able to manage easily with your uh, uh, single instance of obs that should not at all be a problem but if you want to go for multiple instances then you will have to sort of work it out because the only thing that you'll have to do is just go in there and select your source as your virtual camera once you do that the stream will start that's it okay thank you yeah um so any other questions on what we discussed today i think it might be quite a bit uh, overwhelming because uh, we saw the fundamentals and also how to set up a scene today so uh if you have any questions please feel free to ask so i think we have to do practically then only yes. we can uh, absolutely absolutely see with all of these tools the basic is to practice because when i demonstrate things it look very very simple because obs if you look at the on screen interface itself the number of buttons are they are very very less it's just a matter of clicking a few things but when it comes to practice you will uh, see some roadblocks happening but again keep practicing you can refer back to this video to see how you can do uh, certain things and that's the reason why i kept this first version very very light i just wanted to go over uh, some of the basics and how to set up a scene and all of that in the next edition of coffee with vaidhi we will continue with obs where i will show you how to set up streams for facebook for youtube how to identify a stream key how to create stream keys i will show all of those things and again how to uh, actually go about to the screen recording and how to uh, retrieve those files and all those aspects we'll be talking about in our next uh, edition of coffee with vaidhi oh sure. thank you very much thank you okay so if there are no more questions i guess uh, we can close today's session and i would like to thank you all for uh, being part of uh, today's session it was wonderful talking to you all today uh, i will be sharing the recording of this session uh, hopefully by tomorrow uh, so you can go through it and um, come get back to me with any questions that you have and i really look forward to talking to all of you in the next edition of coffee with vaidhi so until then thank you and wishing you a very wonderful evening thank you thank you sir thank you.